Nearly a week has passed since the Starship Flight 7 mission, yet we can't help but marvel at what SpaceX has accomplished. Perhaps the most striking aspect is the explosion of Starship 33, a dramatic event that has captured global attention. However, is this truly the disaster that the media has portrayed it to be? The data from the explosion of Starship's seventh flight has shown us how the rocket was destroyed. Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss any of our updated episodes. Our next goal is 150,000 subscribers. Of course, we strive to get better in every aspect, but we still need your support. Thank you very much. The success of Booster 14 was evident and required little discussion. The more pressing issue lies with Starship 33, which SpaceX has poured immense effort into refining and upgrading, aiming to set new records only for it to unexpectedly explode. From the very beginning of the launch, Starship appeared to exhibit suboptimal performance. At around 1 minute 30 seconds into the flight, camera footage showed a shield made of an unidentified material detaching and fluttering in the wind. While this was not a direct cause of Ship 33's explosion, in many cases, such an issue could pose a potential risk to cargo flights and result in more severe damage during re-entry. Hopefully, this minor flaw will be effectively addressed in Starship's next launch. The problems didn't stop there. Starship continued its descent, and at the 8-minute mark after liftoff, one of Ship 33's sea-level Raptor engines failed. Shortly after, flames became visible on the hull of the vehicle, suggesting a fire already underway. While some flames on the outer body near the engine vents can be expected, their persistence in this case was a clear sign of trouble. As the flight progressed, two more engines failed, and by the 8-minute mark, it was evident something was seriously wrong. Methane levels on the ship dropped rapidly, further hinting at a potential leak somewhere on the vehicle. At 8 minutes and 27 seconds, SpaceX telemetry updates ceased, with the numbers on screen freezing. What happened next became clearer thanks to footage shared by multiple sources on X. The videos show Ship 33 losing control completely and possibly being terminated by the Turks and Caicos. Witnesses reported streaks of light across the sky and a rare jellyfish effect as debris from the ship re-entered the atmosphere illuminated by sunlight. The visible debris indicated that Ship 33 exploded, breaking into three large pieces that continued to fragment into smaller ones as they descended. All of this could point to the possibility of a gas leak, as Elon stated shortly afterward. Preliminary indication is that we had an oxygen fuel link in the cavity above the ship engine firewall that was large enough to build pressure in excess of the vent capacity. Although the root cause of the issue has essentially been identified and many lessons have been learned, we have to acknowledge that SpaceX effectively did not have the opportunity to conduct its attended tests on the first Starship V2. As a result, Flight 8, previously predicted to be a catch Starship mission, may now see this effort push back to Flight 9. The timeline for the next two flights remains uncertain as SpaceX is currently under investigation by the FAA, the agency responsible for issuing flight licenses. In a statement January 17th, the FAA confirmed it would require SpaceX to do an incident investigation for the Starship Super Heavy test flight. The FAA is requiring SpaceX to perform a mishap investigation into the loss of the Starship vehicle during launch operations January 16th, the agency said. There are no reports of public injury, and the FAA is working with SpaceX and appropriate authorities to confirm reports of public property damage. The FAA did not provide specific reports regarding the property damage, but there have been online posts from individuals in the Turks and Caicos claiming to have found debris that they believe originated from Starship, which includes the distinctive hexagonal tiles used in the vehicle's thermal protection system. There are no reported injuries and reports of only minimal property damage at this time, though. National Security Secretariat of the Government of Turks and Caicos Islands said in a Jan 17th statement. It urged people who found debris to avoid handling it and contact the government officials. Like many across the Turks and Caicos Islands, I shared the concern caused by the outfall of debris and bright colors in the sky yesterday evening, Delaney Daniel Civiltarnum, governor of the islands of British territory, told the local publication on January 17th. She said the government was working with the FAA as well as the UK Space Agency to investigate any potential risks. The FAA also confirmed in its statement the debris from the incident fell outside of the designated areas. During the event, the FAA activated a debris response area and briefly slowed aircraft outside the space where space vehicle debris was falling or stopped aircraft at their departure location.
Several aircraft requested to divert due to low fuel levels while holding outside impacted areas, the agency said. A debris response area is activated only if space vehicle experiences an anomaly with debris falling outside of the identified closed aircraft hazard areas, the FAA added. It allows the FAA to direct aircraft to exit the area and prevent others from entering. According to Aviation Tracking Services, several dozen aircraft had to alter their flight paths in a response to the incident. That ranged from planes going into holding patterns till the airspace reopened to flights that diverted back to their original airports or to another airport. SpaceX, though, said the debris would not have fallen outside designated zones. Starship flew in the designated launch corridor, as all U.S. launches do to safeguard the public both on the ground, water, and in the air, the company said on the page devoted to the mission. Any surviving pieces of debris would have fallen into the designated hazard area. In the end, SpaceX took the lead in the investigation, as the company confirmed. Data review is already underway as we seek out root cause. We'll conduct a thorough investigation in coordination with the FAA and implement corrective actions to make improvements on future Starship test flights. Following this, the FAA will provide a list of corrective actions the company needs to take before Starship can return to the launch pad for another test. The situation seems to have been neatly handled by SpaceX, showcasing their ability to quickly address issues during an investigation. However, many still blindly believe SpaceX is directly harming people by the debris falling from Ship 33. Given the current situation, it is easy to predict that SpaceX's future could face legal battles related to their recent flight. But is the explosion of Starship 33 really that dangerous? According to a pilot who shared info with the space community about the safety protocols for Starship 7. For Starship 7's launch, the FAA issued a NOTAM, Notice to Airmen, featuring a closed airspace area around the launch site and a broader warning area across Starship's planned trajectory. The vehicle's rapid unscheduled disassembly happened within the designated warning area, which raises the question, why wasn't the airspace entirely closed from the beginning? The reason lies in altitude calculations. SpaceX and the FAA planned for Starship's altitude throughout its trajectory. At the time of the explosion, Starship was already in space space, about 90 miles above Earth. Most commercial airliners fly a lot lower, with a maximum cruising altitude of approximately 41,000 feet or around 7 miles. The explosion, though visibly dramatic, posed no immediate risk to planes flying at those lower altitudes. The debris event occurred more than 83 miles above them. What happens next? When Starship's disassembly occurred, SpaceX immediately notified the FAA. In turn, the FAA activated the warning area and air traffic control redirected planes away from the affected zone. These procedures and contingency plans are carefully calculated well in advance of any launch. This isn't about hoping for airliner safety, it's about ensuring it by design. Anytime airspace restrictions occur, whether for a presidential moment, a Super Bowl, or military ops, it can lead to delays. However, since the no for Starship 7 was issued beforehand, airlines had the opportunity to prepare. They could plan alternate routes, carry extra contingency fuel, or plan for potential diversions. From a pilot's point of view, this type of planning is routine, much like navigating around thunderstorms. On this day, a small number of planes got rerouted, held, or experienced minor ground stops. In context, only a few dozen flights were impacted compared to the hundreds typically delayed by a Houston thunderstorm or a presidential fundraiser. Although the dramatic footage of Ship 33's explosion has surfaced, including impressive cockpit shots, it's important to understand that space debris often appears closer than it really is. Many viewers have misunderstood the distance of the debris because estimating distance at high altitudes is a challenge for those without proper training. In reality, the debris was miles away from any aircraft. After all, the FAA did its job and SpaceX adhered to protocol. The mechanical issue led to the disassembly has already been identified and SpaceX is working to fix it to keep its launch cadence on track. While the visuals were spectacular, the reality is that safety was a top priority, meticulously managed by both the FAA and SpaceX. Following the challenges of Starship Flight 7, SpaceX has gained valuable lessons in the development of Starship's program. Although the outcome of Ship 33's flight did not fully meet expectations, the nature of test flights inherently carries high risks and opportunities for learning. Ship 33 represents a leap forward in the evolution of Starship, not just in technological advancements, but also in how SpaceX continues to push the boundaries of aerospace engineering. The critical upgrades equipped on Ship 33, such as redesigned forward flaps to enhance aerodynamics, improved avionics for greater reliability and real-time responsiveness, and an optimized methane piping system to provide more efficient fuel delivery to the Raptor engines, are testaments to SpaceX's innovation. Each detail in this new design aims to bring Starship closer to becoming the most reliable transport system in history.
More importantly, the data collected from this flight will not only help identify the root cause of the anomaly, but also provide insights to improve performance and safety in future launches. The challenges encountered during testing also serve as opportunities for SpaceX to refine and progress towards goals like transporting cargo and humans to the moon and Mars. This setback serves as a powerful reminder that true innovation is rarely a smooth journey. Embracing failure is an essential part of advancing cutting-edge technology. For SpaceX, each failure is not an endpoint, but a stepping stone toward building stronger solutions. This philosophy not only fosters a culture of learning, but also reflects SpaceX's long-term vision of shaping the future of space exploration. As SpaceX pushes forward with its iterative development of Starship, Preparations for Flight 8 are underway. Ship 34 is at the center of these efforts with a possible launch targeted next month. Engineers are actively applying the lessons learned from Flight 7, focusing on modifications to address issues like engine reliability and fire suppression. These adjustments aim to enhance vehicle performance and safety, demonstrating SpaceX's commitment to refining its systems through rapid prototyping and testing. In parallel, significant infrastructure developments continue at Starbase. A second launch tower is under construction, signaling the expansion of SpaceX's operational capacity. This tower will incorporate the chopstick system designed to catch and manage boosters and starships more efficiently. As this new hardware takes shape, it reflects SpaceX's broader vision of creating a scalable and reusable launch system to support future missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. The advancements in both vehicle and infrastructure underline the company's ambitious trajectory toward making space travel more accessible and routine. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.